Hello, this is Seams Art. I'm an illustrator and comic book artist. Today, I'm going to show how I use the powerful perspective tools in Clip Studio Paint. When it comes to drawing complex backgrounds, perspective rules come in handy. Perspective is a set of rules that helps to keep all the objects in our scene proportioned between them, ultimately giving a sense of realism. Basic rules are really easy to understand, but things get more and more complex the more advanced the scene is. For example, drawing a cube with a one-point perspective is easier compared to draw a stack of irregular objects next to each other. Clip Studio Paint has perspective tools that can help to draw in perspective, making it fast and precise, and today I'm going to show how I like to use them. We're gonna see what are the perspective basics, where to start, how to add a perspective ruler, how to use a perspective ruler in a creative way and a drawing sample. When it comes to perspective, I like to think that the canvas is like a camera viewfinder. The first thing to do is set an eye level. Then with a straight line, I create the horizon line and then I add one or two points depending on what type of perspective I need. Perspective can have many more vanishing points, but for this example, I will only use two. An easy way to visualize a perspective grid in Clip Studio Paint is also loading a 3D model in the project and activating the perspective grid. In this way, it's also possible to learn by changing the perspective number in the subtool detail panel of the 3D object and have a real-time visualization of how changing the vanishing points affects the object depicted. Where to start? I always like to start with a good idea. Perspective grids and technical aspects always come later. So, in order to start, I make a canvas large enough and I draw until I find a concept that I like. At that point, I refine the sketch roughly to get a more precise idea. At this stage, I can also figure out how many perspective points are needed. How to add a perspective ruler? Now that I have an idea of what to draw, it's time to make sure that the everything is in perspective. Usually, I like to eyeball everything in my artwork, but sometimes things can get tricky. So, using a tool like the Perspective Ruler can help to visualize better what's going on. Clip Studio Paint gives the chance to see the vanishing points and eye level when using 3D primitives. In order to visualize the perspective grid used by a 3D object, just click on the ruler icon in the current 3D layer in the layer palette. I add a perspective ruler going in layer, ruler frame, Creative Perspective Ruler, keeping the Create New Layer checked and setting the number of points in the perspective, in this case, 2. I will roughly align all the vanishing points with the sketch I made, and when I'm happy with it, I will lock the layer. How to use a perspective ruler in a creative way. At this point, on a new layer, I start drawing using any brush that has enable snapping selected. To activate it, Go in the Subtool Detail and in the Correction tab click on Enable Snapping. I keep drawing on the new layer, simplifying the lines of the sketch, making them clean and precise, but without adding too many details. When I'm done, I can be sure that the perspective is correct. From this point, I just hide the perspective rulers and continue to draw freehand since I can rely on the guidelines I made with the Clip Studio Paint perspective ruler. However, in case I need to draw some complex element in the scene, I can always turn on the perspective ruler again and add new vanishing points or move some guidelines using the perspective ruler tool. For some extra clarity, I like to turn on the plane grids using the operation tool clicking on the perspective rulers and then in the tool properties click on the grid icons. The perspective ruler is a powerful tool in Clip Studio Paint and I hope that with this video I give you some new ideas on how to use it in a creative way. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. See you next time.